Okay, if you don't get these, we're gonna do them right now. So you're gonna add them to it. We'll add them to them. We're gonna go over it right now. This is the second one. This is the first one, sorry. I'm just gonna make sure you understand what it means, because in your photo book it said occluded angle and an occluded side, okay, which basically I mean which I find between. That's the key observation. So they wanted you to name the included angle for each pair. So I'm gonna mark the uh, mark the side, and then you can find where the they meet to get the angle. The first one was done for you because they were looking at PQ and PR. They meet right here at Q. That's the included angle, the angle that's between them that they have in common. So if I do RQ and PR, what is the included angle? Angle R. Yes. Where do they meet? At R. If I'm looking at PQ and RQ, we should have angle Q. The angle, I'm going to mark the angle. Do y'all see how this arc is between the tick marks? What? Yeah, if the two letters are included for when I'm dealing with my sides, that is my answer. Okay, now. For the second example, we're going to also make sure you can identify it. Either you will mark it or it will be marked for you. Most of them are going to be marked for you. Included side has to be between the angles. So this one should be easier. Here's angle X. Here's angle Z. The side between them have in common that makes the angle XZ. The tick mark is between the two arcs. That's a this is basically what I'm marking for you is how you're going to see it on your 4.4 um, worksheet. So it's already going to be marked. We're going to have to recognize if it's included or not included. So if I'm looking at angle Y and angle X, which is the included side? X, Y. Basically, do you see the pattern for this one? Y. You could say Y, X. So if I'm talking about angle Y and angle Z, so the answer should put them together. Z, Y or Y, Z. It's the same thing. All right, so that's included. That's included. Now, you're going to one of your postulates for proving triangles are congruent is dealing with a non-included side. So the last example here are examples of non-included, not between. Evan, sit up, please. They've already marked the angle for you, angle C and angle B. You can have more than one answer here, but which side is not included with those angles? Not an angle, side. It's marked for you. One of them's already marked for you. BA, or I could say AC. That tick mark here is not in between the arcs. Does that make sense? The side is over here. The tick mark is not. The tick mark has to be in between them for it to be included. The tick mark here is not in between. So it's not included. Okay, so if I'm doing the same thing with angle F and E, which sides are not included? D E or E D. D, F, yes, okay. Last one, if I'm looking at angles A and C, angles A and C, which sides are not included? A, B, or B, C, okay? So you are going, and we're gonna recap your foldable right now. You, the biggest thing is to make, the not included is the most missed. So we're going to make sure you can identify that. Do we have this example down? Okay, you picked up a worksheet that says 4.4, 4.5 worksheet on it. I'm going to show it up here. This is it, 4.4, 4.5. You need to fold on your black solid bold line and add that to your next available page, okay? This will be checked on Tuesday. We will spread on it in class. This PowerPoint, this is just a recap of your pink foldable, okay? 
Guys, if I give you your notes, yes, please get them copied. Get them done so we can get to some practice. But make sure you read them and you are ready to ask questions when we go over them. So this is just going to recap what's already in there. And if you need this, if you want to add this to your spiral, these are in a moto already as well, okay? But I'm not asking you to do that. So there's five ways to prove triangles are congruent. These five ways you need to have memorized. You need to know when to, how to identify those weights. We have side side. Guess what you need for side side side? SSS. Three sides, okay? S just S it out, okay? So three sides, three sides, three sides. We got it. Then we have SAS, a side angle side. You see how the A is in between the S's? So that means the angle is included with the sides, okay? And then we have angle, side, angle. Again, the side is in between the A's. And then this one right here, AAS, is where it's non-included. And I'm going to show you examples of all those. So this right here is what was in your foldable, what I have up here. This is just showing an example. If I see tick marks, three different tick marks, or a combination of tick marks, and I see that same combination in another triangle, I can say now that they are congruent. Do we have questions about side, 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 or S, or S, whatever you want to do, okay? Do we got it? Do we have it? Side, side, side. Okay, now, this is the one where you have to pay attention to the order of your markings. This went with this. This is, this is the example I showed you. Include angle is the angle between the two sides. I went ahead and put the S for the tick marks, and then an A whenever I see an arc, and then an S for the tick marks to see if I can see the pattern. This is what I had on in Moto, part of your notes. So right here, we have a tick mark, an arc. That's another way of showing an angle with the tick mark, and another tick mark, two tick marks. So this, this is a side. They're showing you that the side AB is congruent to D. They have the same tick mark. A is the included angle because it's in between the tick marks. A is included to D. So we have a side, an angle, a side. Since that pattern is both, we can prove that these triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, okay? Now remember, we did congruent figures, the order matters. So if I go from A, B, C, I have to follow that same pattern. Arc, tick mark, no tick mark, okay? You have to name it using the same markings in order, okay? There's more than one way to have a congruency statement, but it just has to be true for both. All right, angle, side, angle. This is the one I gave you on your foldable. It's up here. I wrote the A for the arc, a tick mark that was a side, and an A. That pattern was in both triangles. It has to be in both to prove that they're congruent using angle, side, angle postulate. So A is congru congruent to D. A, B, that's the tick mark, is congruent to D, E. And then we have B is congruent to E. So angle, side, angle. Okay, so that's angle, side, angle. Now, this is the one that's most missed, okay? Angle, angle, side. Here, up here, I have what we had on the pink foldable. AC and DC, not between the angles, meaning the tick mark is not between the A's. So, it's not included. We have the angle, we have another angle, and then the tick mark is over here. It's not between the arcs. If it's in between, then that's angle, side, angle. It cannot be included for angle, angle, side. So what we're going to check, one, that you can identify which postulate. We're going to practice marking to get it. Now, there's ways, false shortcuts. I like to say no donkey postulates. No donkey. Anyone figure out why? If we flip this the order around, we don't say this word, okay? Okay, no donkey postulates. All right, and the reason why is, yes, I can have two angles that are congruent. I can have two sides that are congruent, okay, and another pair of sides, but that doesn't necessarily give me the congruent triangles. See how this one is bigger, have a different angle? That doesn't give me uh, congruency. That doesn't prove congruency. So it's not congruent. Also, ah, uh, no AAA. You cannot... Prove triangles are congruent just by the angles, okay? So no donkey and no ah, okay? Okay, no donkey, no ah. That does not prove congruent. All right, for hypotenuse leg, 
This is the only one we can use with right triangles, guys. So, two parts. There are two parts in a right triangle. You have your legs. Those are the sides that make the right angles. And you have your hypotenuse. And just in reference, make sure you identify your hypotenuse as the side opposite the right angle. Yes, it's the longest side. But sometimes we're going to rotate the, tri the right triangles, and you still have to be able to identify that part. So if I have a hypotenuse and a hypotenuse and a leg, this is what we call a reflexive statement because they're shared. Anything that's overlapping, we're going to use reflexive property. So they both have this common leg. We would say hypotenuse leg, okay? So only we use H what type of triangles? Right, that's it. It's the only one we can use that with. All right, so here's what I'm going to check real quick. I'm going to have some markings up here. Okay, so these are the ways. Side, side, side. Side, angle, side. What's another one? Yes, angle, side, ang angle. What's another one? Yeah, angle, angle, side. Can I, ah? No, no, no. Can I do that? Donkey? No. Okay, no donkeys. Kill the donkey. All right, and then HL. Okay, HL. So, here's what's going to happen on your worksheet. We're going to start practicing this. The triangle is going to be given to you. It's already be marked. You're going to have to see which postulate proves its congruency. So, a way to do that is if, guys, if you see a tick mark, that's representing a side. So, these two have those sides in common. Yep, everyone see it already? Side, angle, right. Okay, let's check to see if you can identify them. Look at this picture. Yeah, we have angle, side, angle. Good job. All right, let's see this picture. No, donkey. You can't use side, side, angle. If I can turn it into a donkey, it's not congruent. Okay? No. Yep. Can't use side, side, angle. All right, what about here? Yeah, that one you can do, angle, angle, side, because the side is not included. All right, let's try these. No, yes, no. That's the ah. We can't do that. Not enough information. What about here? Yes. Side, side, side. All right, let's look at this one. That's a no. No donkey. You're so close. You have a, a you have a, a H, but we didn't. Wait a minute. Yeah, that should have been H L. I'm gonna fix that one. Yep. Yes, H L. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this this worksheet. Okay. So get this out. We're gonna start practicing right now. Tuesday. This is the last thing on the test. Yep. Because you did the the warm up. Yeah. Okay, so to help you pick the right postulate, I would probably practice marking to see if you see the pattern. So right now, two tick marks, two tick marks, that's a side. They have an angle in common, another tick mark. So you see that they have the same pattern. Do y'all see this right here? So this would be side, angle, side. All I want you to do on this page right here is see if you can identify the reason to prove that the triangles are, are congruent. Yes. You only can use three. So Combination of three. It can be more than one. So then like this can be one and this can be yeah, number three. three. Yeah, number three has two ways. Yeah, okay, so this one, did we get angle side angle for here? Okay, so number three has two ways of proving. I can do side angle and a side like that using the vertical angles. So that side angle side, or if I go back to this other angle, that would be angle side angle. Number four doesn't have an angle side. 
I don't know. Number four, what do they have in common? So put the tick mark. If they, have, if they share a side, you will have to add the marking. So this should be angle, side, angle. Yeah. Using this combination, using that angle, side, and the angle. Yeah, number six, you cannot, you know. That's right. Okay, so this is side, side, side. Number six will be none. They sh what side do they share? Yeah, it's not the full side. It's only from here to here is what they share. <laughs> well, because this is it's the same length. I don't, I, I can see that they're, this is like, they're sharing this side right here. I can physically, I can physically see that. Yeah. Number 15, sorry. No, because you have vertical. Mm -mm. Side angle side. All right. All right, number eight. There's none. Number seven. Okay, let's talk about seven. Okay, if if the H was marked, it would be HL because they share this side right here. You have side angle side. Yes. If it's the hypotenuse has to be marked. The hyp the one that's crossed the right angle, the longest side. Yeah. So this has to be marked. Yeah. To use HL. It it has to be a tick mark. You would have to have a tick mark on here. Then I know that hypotenuse is part of the side that they're using to prove. Okay, all right. Number nine. Yeah, side, side, side. All right, good. All right, let's talk about ten. No, no donkey, guys. No donkey. Look, it's an, there's an angle, a side, and a side. We don't do that. We don't do that. Okay? No donkey. <laughs> okay? All right, 11. Yeah, they have this common side right here. So side, side, side. <laughs> okay. All right. This has... Yeah, angle, side, angle. Again, they have this, yep, angle, side, angle, none, for 14, no, because the hypotenuse is not marked, it has to be, has to have a tick mark, has to have a tick mark, this is your L, but the H is not, does not have a tick mark, already on there, yes. 14? No, because the only thing they have is one tick mark this side and that angle. They don't have another side. 15? Nope. 15 exists. Yes. Mark your vertical, guys. Mark, they're not going to mark verticals for you, and they're not going to mark a shared side for you. You have to mark that. So this would be side, angle, side. Okay. Sass, if you want to say it. Get sassy with it. All right. Okay, now, 16. Let's go to the next page. Okay, so now you're going to put it all together. You're going to mark known facts and mark what's given, and then you're going to complete your congruency statement and tell why it's congruent. So start with the given. DE is congruent to EC. So that's a tick mark between D and E and tick mark between E and C. Then it says DE is also congruent to AE. Two tick marks. Two tick marks. We've marked the given. Now we're marking known facts. What do we know? We have vertical angles, so we're going to mark that. We're going to check, do we have one of the postulates to be true? Yep, this is side angle side. Okay, so to complete your congruency statement, you have to complete it using your order. So if it says DE, yeah, CEA. Order matters. 
So, yes, there's two blanks here. When I check, I'm going to check that you did the correct order, and then I'm going to check. Okay, if you did, how do I do this? How do I do this? A, E, C. If he does this, this would be wrong. It's not the right order. It starts with D and goes to E, going through a tick mark, so it has to start with C and do the same thing. 17. Let's do 17. All right. E is the midpoint of K, W. So what do we need to mark? Yeah, K, E, and E, W are congruent. Definition of midpoint. Then angle K, E, G. That's an arc. And angle, was it, did I do that right? Oh, I put it in the wrong arc. K, E, G. That's over here. W E H, right? Okay. That's an arc. And then angle K and angle W. Yeah. It is angle side angle. I saw we're going to be all Renaissance in here. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. If I go to K to E G, it has to be W W E H. Very good. All right, let's try the next one. <laughs> Angle B, uh, oh, TVU. So I'm going to mark that. Angle TVU is congruent. Well, I just, I go, for, I go in the order. The V, the vertex, whatever letters in the middle is where I have to mark it at. So I go TVU, so the V is where it has to get marked. And then I do W U V, so the w, the U is where it has to be marked. And then it says V T is con oops, V T is congruent to U W, so tick mark, tick mark. Okay. After share side. Okay. Yep. So we have side side angle side. Triangle T U V is going to be congruent to yeah W V U yeah there's only one angle yeah yeah it has to be two different angles yeah all right 19 D is the midpoint again so tick marks for M D and D C Angle MDB and T and angle T are congruent. So MDB and angle T. Oh, they're right angles. I'm sorry. Box. Box. I didn't read it all the way. Okay. And then we'll say BD is congruent to ZT. Yep. Side. Side. And. We gotta keep the order. So if I go M D B, yeah, D T Z. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about one more, actually two more. Okay, talk about 21. Okay, and then I want to talk about, um, I believe it's 24. Okay, so on 21, you're gonna have sometimes have overlapping triangles. So if you look at this, I'm going to go ahead and mark it. It says F to P. That's this whole side here, okay, and H to P. That's that whole side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle, because they're talking about that side, and I'm comparing it to that side, right? And I know that also angle F, I'm going to do that in red, angle F and angle H, right? Are you all with me so far? Okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to create my triangle right there, and I'm just going to redraw it over here. So this is the first triangle I had. Here's F, here's P, here's S. The F is what they had marked, and I know this mark, this side was congruent. That's the left side, basically. Yeah, it's two different triangles. So then I had also this side, going from P, like such. It goes to P to H to R. They had the P and the H in common. 
and they had the angle H in common, right? So what, remember these, clearly, I wish I could, let me see if I did it right. No, no. Yes, but I didn't mark it right. You see how they're like overlapping each other? Yeah. So what do they have in common? Which angle? You're right. Yeah, P is what they have in common. This is what we call an overlapping triangle. When a triangle overlaps, they're going to have an angle in common. Now we can see it. It's angle, side, angle. Okay, angle, side, angle. To the very end, they want us to figure out what else information is needed for the given postulate. So if we know that QP, hold on just a second, and MN is congruent, and we're trying to do angle, side, angle. We got the side, so what do we need? Which angles would have to work? Angle Q had to be congru congruent, excuse me, to angle M, that's one set of angles, and angle P needed to be congruent to angle N. So you're giving what additional information is needed so it would hold true for angle, side, angle. Okay, yes. Uh, the, the bottom part or the top up here? No, the most, some, these would work, these are gonna work, yeah. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday is when I'm going to check for it to be done. And then this last page, yes, was your question. Okay, last page, though, guys. So we're just putting it all together. You're doing the exact same thing. Marks for you. You're, pro you're completing the congruency statement. So yes, we have side, an angle, and a side. So yes, it's side, angle, side, okay? Now, talking about A, B, C, I'm starting with the arc, the angle that's marked. That would have to be uh, F, E, D. Okay, so you are trying to find the missing variable on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the sides that I know that are congruent to each other. A, C, yes, is three X, but I know A, C is congruent to A, B, or it's actually something, DA, where's it at? AC. This one tick mark is congruent to this one tick mark. AC. AB is congruent to FE. So, I'm just gonna substitute. AB I know is, what is it, negative Y plus five equals my FE was 2Y minus 10, and now I can solve for Y. Okay. Yeah. Side, angle, side. Yeah, that should have been stuck. No, you're just going to, I'm just going to, you're going to turn in your spirals on Tuesday. Yeah. And I'll just look for it in there. 